In August, yet another grooming gang scandal was revealed, Operation Shelter, an undercover police investigation in Newcastle, which resulted in 17 men and one woman being convicted of rape, human trafficking, and inciting prostitution. It was discovered that in this individual case, there was more than 100 girls and young women had been groomed and raped at sex parties, which they called sessions. They were drugged, assaulted, and their lives changed forever by these gangs of men. The investigation continues still now today, and authorities in the Northeast now say there's as many as 700 girls have been identified as victims. And if we were to believe the media, the perpetrators of this would be Asian men. Channel 4 News reporter Kathy Newman came under fire on Twitter when she made the same claim. She replied by saying she didn't know the religion of the perpetrators and that it's irrelevant anyway. But we know the religion of these perpetrators, all of us know it, and it's not irrelevant. If a neo-Nazi committed terrible crimes against local Jewish people, would we shrug off his neo-Nazi beliefs and call it irrelevant? If a radical socialist bombed a conservative club, would we say his political activism wasn't relevant to the crime? Of course we wouldn't. Why should we? We shouldn't treat any person, regardless of their race or religion, the same. If they commit a crime based on deeply held beliefs, and if that crime becomes a pattern, we should recognise it and take it into consideration when attempting to tackle these crimes. And at the same time, claiming that Muslim crimes are Asian is staining the character of multiple innocent communities in Britain. Calling grooming gangs Asian implies that they consist of Japanese, Korean people, Indian Sikhs, Nepali Hindus. But that's just not true. We all know it's not true. Given that the media is so quick to cry racism, why are they attacking these innocent communities? All of these communities also fall, fall victim to Muslim grooming gangs. Let's break it down. Statistics show that it's not Asian in Britain who are committing more crime, and gang raping children is one of the worst crimes. Looking at the prison population alone, it shows a clear pattern. In England and Wales, according to the census in 2011, 5% of the country was Muslim. Hindus made up 1.5% of the population, Sikhs only 0.8. The Hindu and Sikh communities, both largely Asian, had similarly small percentage of the prison population. Just 0.9% of the prison population is Sikh, and a tiny 0.5% of the prison population is Hindu. But the Muslim population of prisons is genuinely shocking. Despite being 5% of the population, the latest prison stats show Muslims make up 15.2% of the prison population. Yes, 15.2. That's three times their percentage of the national population. And the media has the cheek and the balls to say that we have a problem with the Asian community. Not only is this obvious in crime generally, but it's undeniable that grooming gangs in the UK are almost entirely Muslim. 90% of those who are convicted for grooming gang crimes are Muslim males. 20% are called Mohammed. This blows Kathy Newman's argument out of the water and exposes the media's claim about Asian grooming gangs as complete lies. Even Trevor Phillips, the former head of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, had, he had to admit himself that he'd been wrong. In 2016, he produced a documentary called What British Muslims Really Think, which was based off a survey of British Muslims. The film essentially explained how he had been wrong about the Muslim population of Britain for many years. But of course he didn't apologise. He revealed that 66% of British Muslims would not inform if they knew someone was getting, getting involved with terrorism with ISIS. 52% don't believe homosexuality should be legal in Britain. And by the way, these facts are the ones that answered the questions. Many didn't answer the questions, just remained silent. This year, he's even admitted that grooming gangs are a Muslim phenomenon. In his Telegraph comment, he wrote, what the perpetrators have in common is their proclaimed faith. They are Muslims, and many of them would claim to be practicing. It is not Islamophobic to point this out, any more than it would be racist to point out that most of the active persecutors of LGBT people come from countries where most people are like me, black. Again, he didn't apologize for smearing all of us as racist for years, but at least he's finally admitting he was wrong. So why is, the, why is it the media can't do the same? I never thought I'd say this, but Trevor Phillips is more honest about these crimes than most people. The media won't admit it, and even Nasir Afsal, the Crown Chief Prosecutor who brought the cases against the Rochdale Gang in 2012, falls short. Afsal has done incredible work. He prosecuted the family members who murdered Samri Nazar in an honour killing in 2005. He was also involved in the prosecution of Stuart Hall, the BBC broadcaster who admitted to indecently assaulting 13 underage girls between 1967 and 1986. Afsal gets things done and it doesn't seem like political correctness affects his decisions at all. But his August Daily Mail piece called on his Asian community to end the vile misogyny behind the latest child sex scan scandal. Nazir, really, come on. You know what we're talking about here. 
In his piece, he talks about the appalling misogyny fueling the growth of grooming gangs. And he explains how Asian child abusers see teenage girls and hate them because they are free. He says these men believe girls should be pure and locked up away from temptation, which should tell him that this is a cultural and not racial. This is a commonly held belief of Muslim men, and it comes straight from the Quran and the Hadiths. He also asks what we are doing to tackle the barbaric attitudes behind grooming, and the answer is, well, we're doing nothing. It's good that we see more of these gangs exposed, but what concrete steps have been taken to prevent this from happening all over again? I can't really think of anything that's been done. Where are the police officers outside schools protecting young girls in Muslim neighborhoods? Where are the police when locals see young girls going in and out of houses in council estates where they, where they know drugs are being sold to them? We're still too scared to admit what the problem is. Nazir Afzal, the British press, and all of the politicians prove this. And until we're willing to admit that this horrific crime might have something to do with the dreaded I word, then nothing's ever gonna be done. If the politicians admitted this had something to do with Islam, they would have to take steps to solve the problem. And what politicians want to be known as an Islamophobe and lose the whip of their party, along with the salary, pension, and expenses that go with it? If we are ever to solve this problem, the complicated language and the lies need to end. The statistics show it. You can see it with your own eyes. The grooming gang crisis is a Muslim problem and the Asian community is not to blame, period. Muslim, not Asian. If you like that video and you want to see more, please subscribe to The Rebel.